Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this special series presented by Live Law. As is the annual tradition, Live Law brings to you the list of 100 crucial judgments delivered by the Supreme Court in 2023. This is your host, Urvashi Chahan, and get ready with me and join me as we explore these landmark rulings and uncover the profound impact they have on our legal language. Let us begin. Starting with the case of Vivek Narayan Sharma versus Union of India, where a five-judge constitution bench comprising Justices S. Abdul Nasir, B. R. Gawai, A. S. Bapanna, V. Ram Subramaniam and B. V. Nagratna upheld by a 4 to 1 majority the decision taken by the Union government six years ago to demonetize the currency notes of 500 and 1,000 denominations. The majority held that centre's notification dated November 8, 2016 is valid and satisfies the test of proportionality. Justice B. V. Nagratna in her dissenting view held that though demonetization was well intentional and well thought of, it has to be declared unlawful on legal grounds and not on the basis of objects. In the case of Kaushal Kishore versus State of Uttar Pradesh, the bench of Justices S. Abdul Nasir, B. R. Gawai, A. S. Bopanna, V. Ram Subramanian and B. V. Nagratna held that additional restrictions not found in Article 19 Clause 2 cannot be imposed on the exercise of right to free speech under Article 19 Clause 1 subclause A of Ministers, MPs and MLAs. It held that grounds mentioned in Article 19 Clause 2 for restricting free speech are exhaustive. The court by 4 is to 1 majority added that statements made by minister, even if traceable to any affairs of state or protecting the government, cannot be attributed vicariously to the government, even applying the principle of collective responsibility. In her dissenting opinion, Justice B. V. Nagratna agreed that greater restriction cannot be imposed on free speech in addition to grounds under Article 19 Clause 2. However, she observed that in case a minister makes disparaging statements in his official capacity, then such statements can be vicariously attributed to the government. Next is the case Rohan Dungat versus State of Goa and others. The bench of Justice M. R. Shah and Justice C. T. Ravi Kumar held that the parole period has to be excluded from the period of sentence under the Goa prison rules of 2006 while considering 14 years of imprisonment for premature release. The bench held that if the parole period is included as part of the sentence period, then any prisoner who is influential enough may get parole several times. In the case of Association of Old Settlers of Sikkim versus Union of India, the bench of Justices M. R. Shah and B. V. Nagratna held that excluding Sikkimese women merely because she marries a non sikkimese after 1st April 2008 from exemption provisions under Section 10, Clause 26 AAA Income Tax Act is totally discriminatory and thus unconstitutional. The court also held that the exclusion of old Indian settlers who have permanently settled in Sikkim prior to merger of Sikkim with India on 26 April 1975 from the definition of Sikkimese in Section 10, Subclause 26 AAA of Income Tax Act is unconstitutional. In the case State through CBI versus Gangi Reddy, the bench of Justice M. R. Shah and Justice C. T. Ravi Kumar held that there is no bar in cancelling default bail on merits after presentation of charge sheet. The question that arose in the case was whether default bail can be cancelled after presentation of charge sheet when it was granted for not filing it within 90 days as per the Code of Criminal Procedure. The next important case is Saurav Das versus Union of India. The quorum was Justices M. R. Shah and C. T. Ravi Kumar. It was held that police and investigating agencies like CB, ED, etc. cannot be directed to upload the charge sheets filed in cases in a public platform for easy access by the general public. In Manu Bhai Sendha Bhai Bharwad and another versus Oil and Natural Gas Corporation Limited and others, the bench of justices M. R. Shah and M. M. Sondaresh held 
that to continue with the temporary acquisition for a number of years would be arbitrary and can be said to be infringing the right to use the property guaranteed under Article 300A of the Constitution of India. Even to continue with the temporary acquisition for a longer period can be said to be unreasonable, infringing the rights of the landowners to deal with or use of the land. The bench comprising Justices B. R. Gawai and B. V. Nagratna in the matter Baharul Islam and others versus Indian Medical Association struck down the Assam Rural Health Regulatory Authority Act of 2004, which permitted diploma holders in medicine and rural health care to treat certain common diseases, perform minor procedures and prescribe certain drugs. The court said that any variation in the standards of the qualifications required of medical practitioners who render services in rural areas, that is, those rendering services in urban and metropolitan areas, is violative of the constitutional values of substantive equality and non-discrimination. The bench of justices Ajay Rastogi and Bella M. Trivedi in the case titled Nayam Ahmed v. State disapproved of the practice of trial judges recording the deposition of a witness only in the English language form as translated by the judge when the witness testifies in a different language. It was held that the evidence of the witness has to be recorded in the language of the court or in the language of the witness as may be practicable and then get it translated in the language of the court for forming part of the record. Next is the case of K.L. Suneja and others versus Dr. Manjit Kaur Monga, where the bench of justices M.R. Shah and S. Ravindra Bhatt issued an important direction that all courts and judicial forums should frame guidelines to ensure that amounts deposited with the office or registry of the courts or tribunals are mandatorily deposited in a bank or financial institution. This direction was issued to ensure that litigants do not face any future loss of interest on the amount deposited before courts. In reference policy strategy for grant of bail SMW, the Supreme Court's bench comprising Justice Sanjay Kishan Kaul and Justice Abhay S. Oak issued guidelines on the issue of under trial prisoners who continue to be in custody despite having been granted the benefit of bail on account of their inability to fulfill the conditions stipulated in the bail order or otherwise. Moving on to the case titled Common Cause versus Union of India, the constitution bench comprising Justices K.M. Joseph, Ajay Rastogi, Aniruddh Bose, Rishikesh Roy and C.T. Ravi Kumar modified the slew of directions relating to advanced medical directives or living wills issued in a 2018 judgment that had recognized the right to die with dignity as an inextricable facet of the right to live with dignity. Under Article 21 of the Constitution, and had accordingly upheld the legal validity of passive euthanasia. In the case of Bar Council of India versus Bonnie Foy Law College and others, another Constitution bench comprising Justices Sanjay Kishan Kaul, Sanjeev Khanna, Abhay S. Oak, Vikram Nath, and J. K. Maheshwari upheld the power of the Bar Council of India to require law graduates to qualify for the All India Bar Examination as an eligibility criterion to practice law in India. And now coming to Aparna Ajinkya Firodia versus Ajinkya Arun Firodia. The bench comprised Justices V. Ram Subramanian and B. V. Nagratna observed that DNA tests of children born during the subsistence of a valid marriage may be directed only when there is sufficient prima facie material to dislodge the presumption under section 112 of the Indian Evidence Act. Next, I will tell you about C. Yamini and others versus High Court of Andhra Pradesh, where the Supreme Court dismissed a writ petition filed by nine judicial officers from Andhra Pradesh seeking to direct the Andhra Pradesh High Court to consider them for elevation as High Court judges. The bench deciding the case comprised Justices Ajay Rastogi and Bela M. Trivedi. 
In an important judgment on PMLA in the case of Directorate of Enforcement versus M. Gopal Reddy, the Bench of Justice M. R. Shah and C. T. Ravi Kumar reiterated that the conditions under Section 45 of the Prevention of Money Laundering Act for grant of bail are applicable to anticipatory bail applications under Section 438 of the Code of Criminal Procedure as well. In the Adani Hindenburg issue, that is the case titled Vishal Tiwari versus Union of India, the Supreme Court bench of CJI D.Y. Chandrachud and Justices P.S. Narsimha and J.B. Pardewala had directed the Securities and Exchange Board of India to complete the investigation of the Adani Hindenburg issue within a period of two months and file a status report before the court. The next important judgment came from the bench of Justices K.M. Joseph, Ajay Rastogi, Aniruddha Bose, Rishikesh Roy and C.T. Ravi Kumar in the case of Anoop Baranwal versus Union of India, where this constitution bench ordered that election commissioners will be appointed by the President of India on the advice of a committee consisting of the Prime Minister and leader of opposition in the Lok Sabha or leader of the largest opposition party and the Chief Justice of India. Later in the year, as you know, the Parliament in its winter session passed the Chief Election Commissioner and other Election Commissioners Appointment, Conditions of Service and Term of Office Act 2023, which removes the Chief Justice of India from the committee responsible for appointing the Chief Election Commissioner and other Election Commissioners. Also, petitions filed challenging the legislation are pending in the top court. Next is the judgment in the case, the Secretary Ministry of Consumer Affairs versus Dr. Mahindra Bhaskar Limaye. In this matter, the Supreme Court held that persons having a bachelor's degree and having a professional experience of at least 10 years in consumer affairs, law, public affairs, administration, etc. should be treated as qualified for appointment as president and members of state consumer commissions and district consumer forums. The bench that delivered the judgment comprised Justice M. R. Shah and Justice M. M. Sondaresh. In the case Union of India versus Sanjeev Chaturvedi relating to whistleblower Indian Forest Service Officer Sanjeev Chaturvedi, the bench of Justices M. R. Shah and B. V. Nagratna referred to a larger bench the issue regarding jurisdiction of a high court to entertain a challenge against an order passed by a tribunal which is situated outside its territorial limit. The next important judgment of the Supreme Court comes from the case Rajendra Kumar Srivas versus State of Madhya Pradesh, where a bench of Justice M. R. Shah and Justice C. T. Ravi Kumar directed the Madhya Pradesh High Court to comply with the directions of the Apex Court in All India Judges Association and others versus Union of India and others particularly the one asking the high courts to reserve only 10% seats in the higher judiciary to be filled up by limited departmental competitive examination. And now regarding the Bhopal gas tragedy. In the case Union of India and others versus Union Carbide Corporation, a constitution bench comprising Justices S.K. Kaul, Sanjeev Khanna, A.S. Oak, Vikram Nath and J.K. Maheshwari dismissed the curative petition filed by central government seeking to reopen the settlement with the Union Carbide Corporation to claim additional compensation for victims of the Bhopal gas tragedy of 1984. The Supreme Court bench of CJI Chandrachud and Justice Hima Kohli this year in March upheld the notification issued by the central government in 2019 to abolish the Odisha Administrative Tribunal. It said that the union government has the power to abolish state administrative tribunal. The case title is Odisha Administrative Tribunal Bar Association versus Union of India and others. The Supreme Court bench of Justices V. Ram Subramanian and Pankaj Mittal in the case of Mehdoom Baba versus Central Bureau of Investigation noted that in some parts of the country, trial courts follow the practice of remanding the accused when they appear in response of a summoning order. Therefore, accused persons apprehend arrest, 
even in cases where the investigating agencies are not seeking their custody. It therefore observed that the practice followed by courts to remand the accused to custody the moment they appear in response to the summoning order has to be tested in an appropriate case. The bench made this observation while granting anticipatory bail to an accused. Although the CBI was not seeking custody, the accused was apprehending arrest at the behest of the trial court. Chief Justice of India D.Y. Chandrachur, Justice Hima Kohli and Justice P.S. Narsimha in the case Sundara Rajan v. State by Inspector of Police significantly advised courts to refrain from making patriarchal remarks in judgments. The bench was deciding a petition seeking to review the death penalty awarded to a convict for the kidnap and murder of a seven-year-old boy. Thank you for watching. For more details on the cases I mentioned here, please visit our website at www.livelaw.in. As we conclude this episode, I hope you found our exploration of these significant Supreme Court judgments insightful and enriching. But remember, this was part one of this special series. Stay tuned for part two, where we will continue to unravel more key decisions that shape the legal framework of our nation. Until then, keep exploring, keep learning and stay tuned for more updates from Live Law.